Hi friends, welcome to our channel, Our Journey on Pico Island. I'm Carlos, and on this week's video, we're going to uh, discuss, we're going to share our experience when it has to do with new builds, building a, a property from scratch in the Azores. Uh, this is actually a continuation to the previous video we did last week, which was called the Azores Real Estate, What's Going On? A lot of amazing information on that video we had a lot of uh, people asking a lot of questions and uh, which is pretty constant i think that most of the questions we get at this time is has to do with some sort of uh, retirement semi-retirement building a property buying a property renovating i mean it's a lot of those questions so i'm trying to do instead of answering back and forth we do these videos and uh, as long as I'm getting the questions and the demand and interest I'll, I'll keep doing them uh, just share the information that we've learned along the way with our own experience because we did also buy a home we'll talk about a, our own experience in buying this property about three plus years ago so a lot of people have been asking hopefully uh, this video will be uh, valuable to you Actually, it's a lot easier for me to pass on this information to you, and that's why we chose to do it more on a video podcast. And uh, anyways, I'm going to read these questions. So uh, if you fall under these categories here, uh, this uh, yeah, this video might be for you. But anyway, so are you considering buying a property already in the Azores? You've already made that, made that decision, or maybe it's Portugal, and you're looking within the regions. Uh, you're looking for an affordable, long-stay destination uh, to spend time, you know, one, two, three months, you know, uh, sometime during the year. Are you retired or semi-retired, okay, or considering retirement and semi-retirement? And uh, you're looking for uh, another country uh, either to semi-retire or retire completely. Um, do you want to spend one, three months away from home? Do you want to have a vacation home somewhere? Uh, somewhere with nature, tranquility, peace, nature, you know, all this stuff. So then this video might be for you because if either way you're already looking, maybe uh, closer to making a decision on the Azores or even at the one of the islands of the Azores and you're already there or you just started to look you're just discovering either way there will be information that uh, will suit anyone of you that fall into these categories just to give you an example of some of the questions that I've been having I just kind of got a few off here um, I'll just read one here hi right, Carlos do you know what current cost uh, is to build average quality and above average not luxurious that is new construction per square meter so um, yeah, so these people are already looking, for example. Um, I've replied to them on the email. Um, and yeah, they're already looking. They're just curious now. Uh, seems to me that they've started to look somewhat, uh, but they're still in the beginning stages to find out more just because, I mean, you, you need to know what things cost. I think that's pretty much a lot of these questions are, are fall into this category, either if you're buying a, an older house like we did a, and renovate it or a new build. Either way, you have to ask these questions. I think that's what you need to do. And in, in, like in this uh, in this case, they are doing that. Here's another question. Hi, guys. Question from Moncton. Is there any advantage at all for me to buy a half an acre uh, rustic lot? Um, what, will it help with eventual with eventual retiring? You know, this is more like they're already considering not only buying retiring because obviously you don't need to buy it or retire. You can rent, but um, yeah. So these are the questions in this case. Uh, I think the answer I gave them based on my experience and what I know. You don't have to retire there. You don't have to be living there full time to buy property. You need certain. You have to meet certain criteria. Uh, as long as you do that, you don't have to be a citizen or anything like that. Okay, there's people there right now that, um, you know, spent three, maybe invested in a home, bought, and spent three months out of the year there. So, you know, uh, either way, I'm not an expert. Uh, you can always go into the government sites. All this information will be in there. So, yeah. So we've been get, we've we have been getting a lot of these questions, uh, like over and over again um, and we will try and with this video we will try and shine some light uh, using our experience uh, either things we've done ourselves or things that we've learned from other people that are doing and uh, try and answer these questions to, to the best of my ability anyways so this question is is, um, is it quicker to do a new build a, a cons uh, you know consider doing a new build compared to doing the, the other ways, which is if, if we did buy an old house, renovated, buy a, a new build that's ready to move in. So is it quicker? Okay, so I have to say both. It's yes or no. Now, thinking through our own experience that we've had, 
Yeah, it's yes or no. So no will be the one I'll start with. If you go with traditional now, there's it's going to take time to build uh, because the demand is more in the last three to five years. There's not as much as many builders. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, this is one of the main complaints and things that we've learned the last three years doing what we were doing. I don't think you can build a property uh, with a company lower. And these companies are not huge. They're a good size. There's not too many of them. Uh, most of them are small. And I think two years, if you get a property, you know, going through everything you need to do, to do, you know, legalizing it, uh, architect plans, all that stuff, you know, um, less than two years, I would doubt. I have people saying three to four years, you know, if you want a specific builder that's uh, reputable, sometimes you got to want to use them, you're going to have to wait to even them to start. Okay, so that's the no. Um, if, if the yes would be, yeah, what a lot of people are doing now, because they're learning, they know the situation, they've done the research, they've watched the videos, and we're pretty upfront, we, we've shared our situation with the pros and cons, what's the good, the bad, and so forth. Uh, the bad being lack of quality labor, or just labor in general. I know it's happening a lot of, uh, to a lot of places, but yes, yeah, definitely happening there. It's a smaller, these are islands. Um, so what people are doing is going the other way, away from the tradition. When we say traditional, you build a new from, you know, a new build traditionally is blocks, okay? Uh, there's no basements. It's not like in Canada. Um, it's blocks. So that's how they're built. That's most of the time that's, you know, from beginning. Um, so more lately, there's other options now. You know, again, talking the islands, I know, uh, like wood options and LSF, uh, light steel frame. I think that's what that represents. We've seen this on the island now starting. Um, they're prefabs. They already come. And this is what a lot of people are gravitating to. And this is where they would buy the land and then build on it. And I think if you go this road, uh, it's going to be quicker. No doubt about it. I think in some cases, a lot cheaper. And um, yeah, the other thing I have to say is build small. You know, less is more. If you go with that in mind, and I think I'll see more people doing that now, you don't need to build something big. You know, always go big, you know. Um, if you go small, a lot of people just, if you want just a, a vacation home, uh, maybe you're retired now, um, you know, make it big enough, you know, if you have a big family that's going to be visiting. But a lot of times not everybody visits at the same time. So I, I see people, okay, look, I'm going to build. This is what I, my budget is. I don't want to pay any more. I know it's going to probably cost more. Uh, when it's all said and done, it's going to take more time. So I think if you do this, um, yeah, um, it'll be quicker to do this new build. Um, you need to do your proper due diligence. You need to do your proper due diligence. So I know what I mean by that is if you do this, it'll be quicker. If you don't, it'll be longer. Bottom line, things will go wrong. Um, you know, things will be legalized. You, will, you know, people. I've heard people buy land and they find out that you can't even build on it or the, what they wanted to build, they don't have enough percentages. So you have to do the, the due diligence and you find something, there's an article number, take it to you, um, you know, your notary or lawyer, they will check it for you and say, yes, you can build on it. And then it's clear that it's all legal. Uh, in our case, it was. Um, and the other thing I, I have to say is uh, when, because uh, we're always back and forth between Canada and, there, and the island, people island, when we're not there, things, seem to be slow. Obviously, if you have your, your eyes on it or you have someone that's doing that, that keep an eye on the workers or if, it does tend to go quicker. So that's the, other, the last thing I can say to this. But yes, you could, it could be quicker with a new build, but especially if you go prefab. Now, I'm not saying stay away from traditional because there's a lot of quality being built on the islands. There is quality builders. It's just the time. It's all You have to make that decision. If you want a, a, the traditional way, bigger house with blocks, you know, it's your dream to have one of these. That's what you should do. Just know it'll just take longer. So this next uh, question or concern is someone who's um, they were asking about types of builders, you know, um, literally just wanted to focus in on the builder, what's happening when it comes to builders or big or small. Um, so how would I answer this? Tradition okay, so there's a traditional home like we just discussed traditional builder, that's all they built. They built these block homes the way that's been done for forever, okay? Uh, how it works, they would do, uh, in most cases, especially the cases that I'm aware of, uh, um, estimate. They will do an estimate. You tell them what you want. Okay, I want to build this. They'll say, okay, it's going to cost this much. 
and it's going to take this long. Okay, you sign the contract and off you go. Um, again, tradition. This will always take longer than some of the the well the prefab options. But sticking with this traditional, um, what does slow? Okay, so here's the. I'm trying to word this properly. Um, I try to stay positive with everything. But if you have a quality builder with a reputation, a very good reputation, he's going to be totally honest from the beginning. He's going to tell you, my wait time is this to even start it. Okay. You're going to know all this. That's the way to go. That's what we hope for. Okay. So you will tell you, and then you'll be okay with it, right? Now, he could also tell you, look, I will be doing multiple jobs. My, I have, this is my company. I have two crews or three crews, you know, groups of workers. Uh, we are going to be doing a couple of properties, but at the end of the day, I promise this is going to be done between this time and this time, okay? And usually with quality builders, this, it, they're close, okay, from what I understand, okay? Uh, the problem is when you get the ones that are not honest, the ones that are not ready, they will just tell you um, anything so they can get the build so they can be your builder and then it takes a lot longer they're doing multiple jobs they didn't tell you about they're, they're taking too much on next thing they're just adding time adding time and sometimes they come and ask for more money okay this is this this doesn't just happen here in the islands and resorts or portugal it happens in other places i'm specifically focused on here so yeah that could take that type of builder again it's finding the good one and the bad one like anything else right now, if you stay away from the traditional, then you, again, we go back to the prefabs. And here, what happens is, and uh, I've learned so much in the last year because there's someone I know actually doing them now. He first did it for himself, for a tourism business. And that's what we're considering using for our tourism business that we're working on for the future here. Uh, but he's now building for people that want the home. They don't want to go traditional. So I... Got, you know, I sat down with him and he gave me a lot of vital information that I want to pass on. Again, he's the expert. If someone's interested, you could always email me and I can put you in touch. Uh, but the way it would work is, okay, they would say, okay, they have all these models. Uh, you could pick one of their models of this wood. You love it. You know, I like this way. That's the square meters that I want. You're happy with that. You just order it. And average time, 68 weeks, he orders, let's say, they build it for you. Then it's filled. And then... Um, you know, and they keep you in touch, they keep you informed, okay, now, then you get this, the, the, this container with your home, with your wood home that you've chosen, and they could put this up, I couldn't believe it when I was talking to him, and I saw it with my own eyes, to be honest, and they could put these up, I think, if I'm not mistaken, what did he tell me, one, let's say one property, and they, they only fit, focuses on one at a time, okay, right now, so he's not doing multiple, it's one, so it's done, it doesn't go to the next one. And I think this makes a big difference. And uh, I think from what um, he told me, I'm just going to say, let's just say six to eight weeks, maybe even less, you know, you can get this house. No, these are not huge places. The ones that I've seen was about 50 square meters, I believe. Uh, I wouldn't build personally anything bigger than that for myself, for, our, for ourselves. And... Um, yeah, so this is it. Um, no, the other prefab LSF, I got to see also this. Someone brought the first LSF to the, and uh, the owner was there almost daily, and they put this place up in about four weeks, believe it or not. Uh, the, the, the skeleton, the, what we needed, and then yeah, the whole maybe two months it took for them to have a completion, you know. So you see the difference, right? Okay. Um, and these are the, th this is pretty much, they're all builders. It's just the system that they're in. And, you know, that in the prefab, it's a system that's already, that's how the prefabs work. You order it, they build it, they ship it, and then they put it up. With, definitely with, with the wood product, the prefab, or the LSF, uh, even though they have their own designs already made, their own kits, and uh, a lot of options, you could also have your own. You could have, they can build what you want. Another question that I keep getting is, um, now they're asking me, obviously I'm on Pico Island, but they were asking me in general in the Azores, and I'll even throw the Portugal because I'm seeing... The question was, is buying land still affordable? Uh, yes. The question, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, and I see, I'm seeing this throughout Portugal, okay? Because uh, I think a lot of people are gravitating to building from, from, you know, from scratch. They're trying to, they're building their own. They have their own dream home exactly how they want it. Uh, so they are, they obviously need land, so they will buy land. So I think there's a bit of a demand. There's also a lot of land available from what I can see. 
Um, so the key is, is to take your time, right? So uh, to get to know the islands, uh, whatever area of the, uh, of the island, if you're on mainland, where, where are you in Portugal, the region of Portugal, they're all priced differently. And, um, but I'm seeing a lot. I mean, it's one thing I've been surprised. I think even more, this last year, more than ever, uh, just like I'm seeing a lot more demand, I'm not, there is more demand for everything, but there's a, there's a lot of um, inventory, even for older houses, uh, ruins, uh, houses ready to move in, fairly new builds, but also land. I can see more and more land becoming available. Um, even the areas that weren't des designated to build, uh, sometimes they change the designation, you know, and then they allow you to build. So these are all things that are happening and it could happen, you know, this year you can build here, maybe two years from now. Um, in this area, they might, okay, no more building here in this area. So um, these are all things you, that you, that you would check through the government or notary. Um, but I must add, to have success with this, uh, to buy the, the land, like I said, take your time. Uh, you, the, the key, and I cannot stress this enough, make sure that the documents are legal. One, this is one thing. So you found the land, you're in love with this land, you can already visualize what you want to put on this land. Everything is an article number, in Portuguese, at um, You would take it to a notary or a lawyer. Uh, I think that's the way to find a good notary, a lawyer. I'm going to probably say this a few times. This is what we did. Uh, it's, it's worth its price in money. And they don't even charge anything close to what they would charge in, here in Canada. And uh, the, their job is very important, vital, actually. So, again, you make sure it's legal, okay? Uh, and then when it is legal, okay, no problem. Everything's legal. It's cleared. Uh, the people that own this land are exactly who own this land. There's not some someone in question mark. Well, in a second, there's someone, because sometimes this appears, right? If you don't do this properly, there's people sure they shook their hands 50 years ago, 100 years, you know, who knows? Uh, but let's say it's legal. You also have to now make sure, which the notary will find out through the, the government, uh, that you can build on it, okay? It's not just good enough to be legal. You might have something legal and you can't build on it. It's only good for farming, agriculture, right? Or good for, uh, you know, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of land. That, that's why a lot of these areas in the islands are protected and we want that, right? We don't want them to build everywhere, right? So this is good. It's just you have to, to know, okay, I love this land. It's legal. Perfect. That's it. Now, if you still have to do this step. Can I build on it? And there's a third step connected to the, uh, can I build on it? So in other words, are going to say, yes, in this designation, let's say it's rural or sometimes agriculture, they allow, so there's rules for different designations. So they just say, okay, on this piece of land here, you know, urban is, enough. urban is probably the most flexible. They can say to you, you, you can build here but only in 25% of it or 10% or 5%. So you find that out because you might want, need more percentage, right? So if all this checks, you know, you, you found the land, it's legal, you can build on it. And now, yeah, there's, I only want to build this much and I can build on it. So that, then you've done your due diligence, your mind's clear, don't have to worry about it anymore. Buy the property, um, negotiate the price, you know, and, you know and, but at, at that point you already, you already know what you're going to pay for. It's just making sure that this this part's done because it's there's nightmare situations where things come back and bite you, and I wouldn't want that to happen to you. Um, so so it's very vital. So uh, a quality notary slash lawyer. In our case, we didn't need a lawyer, just a notary. They were able to do everything for us. Is your best friend. I think that's the first is for us the first the first friend we had, or let's say helpful. Became some we didn't know before, but then the, you know we count on the, on the, the notary. You know we count on them, um, and I think every place has a notary. I mean they, they follow the rules of Portugal. They got to do. They're working for you. Okay, they got to making sure everything is done correctly for you. So they're not. Uh, they are neutral, but they are look. It's, it's they're looking after your best interests. That's the way I. Um, I can't say anything different than that because that's our experience. Let's talk about price ranges uh, when buying land. Like the most common um, a range that I've been seeing, okay, would fall somewhere uh, between 15,000 euros for a piece of land to about 80,000. Uh, why do I pick this range? This is what I see most often when people are trying to sell certain properties, uh, land. I'm talking about just land, pure land. In some cases, I might have some ruins on it, um, but 
that's just it's there's no you can live in any of these properties the ruins are you completely rebuilt so mostly land and you can find them throughout the island and throughout all the islands okay and this is what i keep seeing obviously you're going to see some that are i've seen some like 150 to 100,000 euros now in some cases this is a lot it's like huge amounts of parcels of land sometimes it's for could just be for um, with vineyards on it there's different criteria so i'm just kind of looking at if you wanted to build uh, a property a house your own place uh, either traditional or prefab um, so this is the range that i see a lot so i'm just going to give you uh, what goes along the square meters there at square meters not footage so for example eighty thousand euros okay i saw one not too long ago for 2200 square meters that's a lot of space uh, this would be probably um you know if you want to build a good size home or a small size it's really up to you but you wanted to also use the land for other things uh, grow your own fruit plant some trees and in a lot of cases they would come with trees or a quinta they call it so pretty good space and in these cases you can usually build between 25 and 40 percent most of them you could actually build on 40 percent so it would be like urban um combination some um the ones I saw a lot of urban, maybe a little bit of agriculture, but uh, this is something you would have to check again with your notary. Uh, I saw one for 77,000 euros, um, 970 square meters. There's a difference here. About the same amount of money, uh, but the square meters are is different. This could be because it's, it might be in the more sought after popular area of the island. Um, you know the person you know or not because someone might just be saying okay i'm not gonna i don't really need to sell this uh it's really a thirty thousand euro property uh if i was to compare it around the island but i want seventy seven thousand so these are all things you got to keep in mind um i saw one for sixty thousand euros this was a nice one too about 2600 square meters uh 40 percent you can build and this one had a couple of little ruins when the ruins come with it um uh, you could either restore them, uh, they allow you to extend, but in this case, you could actually build on 40% of this land, almost half. So really depends what you want to do. I saw one for about 45,000 euros. I see quite a bit around this range, you know, 35, 45. Uh, this one had about, I think, about 368 square meters, and you could you could build on 40%. Um, uh, there is one, I didn't, this wasn't listed, but I know someone that bought a piece of land for about 15,000 euros and they can build on it. I think they could build on at least 25, 30% of it. Uh, ocean view, very nice. Um, I think it had about 500 square meters in total, uh, but there it is. There's the price range. So um, um, it's, you know, it, it's a wide range. Like I said, when you go on these platforms and I'll put the links to these platforms where you can go then go look at them and uh, just start looking, you, you can see. It's hard if you've never been there, um, but at least you'll get an idea on what the the, the wide range of uh, pricing there is. And you'll you're going to see they all basically have ocean view, and um, some of them might be clear, some of them might have some forest on there. Uh, That's why it's important to visit. Here's something uh, to keep in mind. Okay, so uh, as you're looking to buy this land, you're looking have your budget. You want to try to get close to this budget. Um, that's why we're doing this video to discuss all these different parts uh, of the process that goes into uh, being on the islands, especially if you've never been there, you can get a bit of a lay of the land of how things work. Um, so let's just say if, if on your list of must-haves you had these, these, you needed to have these, all of them, dramatic ocean views, small village or main town, more private, secluded, countryside, small, lot, big or lot. So if any of uh, on if you uh, if, if on your list you had any of these criteria, it's all possible. Okay, on the islands. Okay, they all all the islands are going to have this on there. I would say that all islands um, it would be hard, let's say, to get something that's not ocean view. You could always get countryside because here you can get both. Right, you'll always but it's, I would say it would be hard. I mean, not everywhere you go, the ocean's in front of you. It's just going to come down to where do you want to be, closer to the main road, away from the main road, closer to the, the ocean, more ocean front in the village. Maybe you want the small village, not the town. I mean, and some of the islands, like the bigger ones, have the city, uh, cities, you know, Tercera, San Miguel. So it just really depends on what you want, what's suited for you. But if it, and on your on your list, you have one of these. No problem. Um, so a couple of tips I thought of to maybe leave with you so I can share with you is um, 
So if you're looking, again, you have that budget, start looking and you see some areas that, okay, well, this is a nice area, this is a nice area, okay. And they happen to be, let's say, the more popular areas of that particular island, okay. Um, and it's above your budget. You know, you know, it's like, wow, why am I seeing, you know, that's what you do. Get as close as you can to where you want to be because that's what you've decided and just buy because you, you, you'll be, the price will change. It won't be the same in most cases, okay. Um, so that's something where, like where we are, I wouldn't say that it's, uh, you know, maybe now it's getting more popular, but overall there's a lot of other areas that are more, that are considered more popular where more of the expats uh, might be settling in or even immigrants coming back uh, where it's more expensive. You can tell and you don't see as much for sale in those areas. That's how you could tell. The areas are more popular, you'll see a lot more available. And um, sometimes it's good because the price might be less, but in some cases they are trying to say, okay, if you want to be here, you're gonna to have to pay more. Um, one thing, um, like if you remember, I just mentioned that when we bought our land, we actually asked the owner. because It wasn't for sale at that time. And even when we bought the land 12, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, it was just a piece of land, not for sale, and uh, I kind of asked around, and uh, they're not, and it was, it worked out. So a lot of times you can do, you know, don't just wait to see something for sale. If you see something you really like, and maybe it's cleared or not, and you say, wow, what a beautiful spot, you know, don't be afraid to find out who owns that land and ask them. Say, by the way, can you? Because sometimes these owners, are, this land's been passed on, and some of them have so much land they would never think of selling it. They're not, it's not what they're thinking. They're older guys, you know. Uh, so if you want to come in and just buy a little area, they might consider it. So it's worth trying. So these are the couple of tips that I'll, I'll leave with you. It worked for us, you know, so I'll just pass that on to you. Now, the building costs. You have your lot, you have your parcel, and now you want to build on it. Um, and it's a wide range. It's hard to um, kind of, I mean, you have the traditional way with blocks, and then you have the prefab. So you have to kind of combine them both. I'm going to say that the range based on what I've been seeing, might fall as low as 450, 500, all the way up to 1200 and a lot in between. And again, depends on the size, what you're using, the materials, so where you are on the islands. Is it one of the less popular islands? Maybe it's the biggest island. The areas of the island really, really depend. It's just a, such an, a, a wide range that, that it's, it's hard. I've seen 1500 a square meter, you know, if you want to go really nice. So, if we use this one, I think I would be, I would feel, you know, pretty comfortable, you know, if I was looking to buy or to build, uh, to find something, because I know that I'm looking more towards the wood, which is the prefab wood that we discussed. And uh, there was a place that I liked, it was about 50 square meters, you know, again, small, not huge. And it worked out to be about 500 euros a square meter. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that's, I just wanted to give you an, a, an idea. This is stuff that you just, you can sometimes pick up, um, in uh, government sites where they're talking more about, um, you know, cost of build, you know, someone, especially in the uh, areas of, uh, if you want to be like, uh, there's a site, I'm trying to remember the name of it, um, moving to Portugal. I think if you put moving to Portugal.com, that'll probably come up and it touches a lot into this. So um, again, it depends on the build, traditional, a prefab, it's all going to have a bearing. And if you go with the ones that's taking longer, uh, more material, Type of material it, it's gonna that that's gonna move you know to the lower to the higher so um, all right okay I also wanted to touch on okay this might have to be with some difficulties when you're doing a new build or even a renovation this is just some difficulties that came to mind uh, that in our case it did affect us um, when we were renovating when the, the, we had to hire build in our case we didn't go with a company per se we went with individuals that charge per hour Basically, that's how we did it. Um, so I'm going to tell you they'll charge. Uh, they'll give you an example. It's I think I believe because we've never built a new build from scratch, so I don't think someone would get into a new build and only per hour. But it might happen. I mean, there's no like it's not like they can't, right? But so let's say they go the hour hourly route. So I I charge ten euros per hour. Let's say um, okay, believe them, a good worker. Um, you figure on uh, five, uh, you know, they're there all day, maybe between 80 and 100 euros a day for them to be working on your property. That's pretty good compared to other countries like Canada. And so it's a lot more expensive. So you figure, okay, the problem is if you have, again, an honest worker, they're going to be every day they are working. They're not doing anything else. So the work's getting done. 
uh, it's gonna they're gonna give you an idea when it uh, you know the works gonna, how long it's gonna take and usually they're close so you can already estimate hourly how much the total bill is gonna be for whatever job you're doing if it's a renovation and if, if it's a new build well it's gonna take longer but you know you just know uh, you, again again if you have a good one if you don't uh, again whatever they told you is gonna take takes double the time while well, you're paying double so it's not no longer 10 euros per hour it's 20 euros per hour. And you can get again this the quality I would say at this stage of the game it's maybe 70 30 you know 60 40 maybe I'll stretch it 60 uh, 40 good 60 bad you know um, hopefully that changes you know because um, there's good and bad in everything and um, it's a very stressful situation if you get involved in a uh, in the bad part in someone that's really you know, or takes off on your job or or just not being honest or doesn't care they, 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 these are things that we came across and that's a whole other video we actually did a few uh, through our whole renovation i'll put the link to our build we have a playlist of from the beginning so there you're going to find uh, exactly what i'm talking about things take time sometimes when you're putting in your architectural plans and say even when you get it's ready to submit now the this project into the town so they approve it that could take time so um sometimes it takes longer than it is so um, this is I'm not just want to say that it's only because of the builder all the time no sometimes the, the, the there's a lot of the, the bureaucracy so that slows things down everyone that's been there now for living there or even just got there and this starting to see that it is a problem hopefully it'll improve but just know just have some patience and uh, uh, ask a lot of questions and uh, you know be I'm not saying go in yelling guns blazing but be a little assertive um and uh you know just be real with them and i think they, they understand the they, they probably people that work in these places have gone through the same thing and they can kind of engage don't make them mad too much don't make them make them your friend not the enemy uh but still you know put your feelings out all right so let's talk about our own situation obviously i'm sharing this information up to this point based on some of our experience either doing it ourselves which is i'm going to share a little bit about our situation or about learning from our friends that are doing things or have done things or from builders like i mentioned with the prefab we got to know a lot about how that works and in our situation um we bought an existing house we kind of had uh, if we were going to do that at some point uh, it was going to be we would like something in, in this particular area because of where I was born on Pico Island for some of you who don't know um, and this I was raised uh, with my mom's side of the family was from this village and that's already had that in the back of my mind Laura which is uh, uh, the better half of our channel and my life um, she's uh, she kind of we were on the same page so we weren't even planning on buying anything at this at that point we stumbled into it on a hike we were at and wow it's just you know 100 years old uh, so a lot of character personality beautiful view like million dollar views everything had everything and they had this old it's actually written on wood for sale i said that sometimes this, these places are sold and they leave this up it's probably not we were leaving in canada in two weeks and i said well let's make a call and sure enough it was still there were it was for sale a year before and then they took it off market we're going back over three years now we had our own idea how much we would like to pay even though we're not we weren't even thinking at that point let's let's see and everything worked out um now we obviously own the property we, we renovated the property it's been three years they took us an extra year to renovate it COVID came along didn't help uh, everything i've been talking about with builders and some good some bad you know took longer um, but we learned so much, and this is why we do these videos. It's part of it, aside from the tourism and you know just showing the island, is to just pass on our our, our information because I know a lot of people have already there that came uh, after us and are very happy there. And uh, most of the situations that I've heard of are, turn out to be positive. Uh, so I just um, yeah, so we got lucky with this house. It was so nice and. Uh, we knew more or less how we wanted to turn the house into uh, not getting rid of too much of the character keeping most of it but we have to make changes to an old house with some damage in certain areas even though for like the chimney we wanted to keep the chimney but then we decided no it's, this is where the the weak point so uh, the chimney was attached to the um, the wood oven we wouldn't have used it anyway so anyways i'll put the link to the to the like i said the playlist and you can see the results uh, but we had um yeah, we got we got lucky. Most of the people that worked on the house were pretty good workers. I would say about 80, 70 percent. Uh, we had situations where they just left. And this is all things that could happen even on a new build. 
they just uh, they were supposed to do this and then the, the new better job came along uh, that's why you need to pay as you go you can't don't pay them in, in, in our case I know sometimes you have to pay in advance uh, especially if you do an estimate a budget so in our case no in, but you're stuck things that's why things take longer I, I'm not very handy I mean we did all what we could ourselves but um, we did not need an order when we bought it because the house we bought it straight from the, the seller the owner uh, what else can I tell you about our situation um, all our documents were legal and um, we we're so lucky uh, we had bought land 10 years before 10 12 years ago same thing dealt with the, with the seller everything legalized they all when it's time to find it, they all come into the office everyone that has their they're attached to that property and they all sit there with you in this little lot and you sign out and they're all there right um, and we bought it at the right time I mean, the right time for us, right? Now might be the right time for you. Uh, every, you know, people, uh, again, other it's a whole other video where you're talking about uh, growth. And that's why we talk on the video we did last week, what's going on. And uh, we touch a lot about what's going on in the last three years. So if that interests you, check out the link. Because there, we, I get into a little bit more information with uh, what's taking place in, uh, and what we're seeing and where we can go from here. And uh, bottom line, whatever's going to happen there, we want to protect the island. Uh, it's never going to be mass tourism. It's going to be just uh, like-minded people looking for the nature. It's not for the masses. Uh, it's not. It's not that kind of destination. It's the location of it. It's not a call for that. Um, again, check out the video. We'll get more into that. Um, we knew the area of the island. So this is the thing where uh, if you already are familiar with the island, let's say you've been there, maybe you visited it. Um, and you're good. Like we have people that can do it. Uh, they'll go on an exploration trip. Maybe they just started thinking about it, uh, but they want to see if there's any legs there. They'll can we, we do these trips through the, the business where we'll put together an exploration trip for a couple of weeks where, yeah, you're getting to know the island or islands, but it's attached to also getting to know the type of real estate, the pro things that I'm discussing right here. You get to meet with whoever you need to meet. In most cases, it could be a banker, it could be a real estate agent, it could be a lawyer, notary. So we these are trips that we hope to do more. We're gonna do. We're really promoting them because there's a need for them, and people are gonna be coming anyways if they're organized with the right people, um, right partners. It's more successful, and I think um, I think these things are important for those that are already at that point, at least already thinking, leaning towards uh, this area of the planet. Um, so I think it's important. Uh, but that's our, our own situation. Let me see. I'm just going on my notes here. Um, to say that we obviously are over the moon spending time there. It's an understatement when we have a say we have a passion, but we do spend half of our time there. Uh, we do miss it when we're not. We're here now in Canada, Ontario, Oakville, and uh, but when we're, we remove ourselves from the, uh, the the beautiful area like the Azores, people we we see it from afar again, and we miss. So we it's good to miss. You know, it's like you know your wife or your girlfriend. You know, step away for a few days or you know, kind of miss it, you know, and that's how we feel with these. And we also miss Canada when we're there. I'm not going to, that's also true. But I mean, we're, we gravitate towards the nature and I think it's good for us to be there. And it's good for a lot of people. It's uh, even if it's just uh, one month or three months, you get a lot out of it. And that's all comes from the nature, I think, the surroundings. And, uh, beautiful islands, uh, the Azores or any or these islands that offer you nature like the Azores. It's really good for your mind, your soul. You, you feel the, it's in the air, it's in the ocean. It's, uh, there you get countryside and ocean at the same time. You don't have to choose one over the other. So all these things, you know, and it's slower, it's peaceful. Again, we have videos on that. You can uh, go into our channel, subscribe, you know. And, um, yeah, so last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to stress. I could not stress this enough, okay. Because I'm about going to finish the video. Hopefully, you got some value, uh, you know, on the video. It's to do your due diligence. That's so important, you know. Um, we knew a little bit about the process before we before buying, but uh, we really learned our basics of the process, knowing zero, and knowing okay what happens here, you know. And it was from the notary. It was from. Uh, this notary and what could always give you a link. Uh, I could always email me and I can give you the contact if you ever need to uh, get more information or anything you need that the notary can give you. Uh, feel free. Um, 
it was from him. We learned that, let's say, the Pros 101 was from the notary. Um, obviously, there was on-the-job training for us, for, you know, being involved in our renovation. So it's right from the buying process and then materials, getting to know the materials, so the, dealing with workers, construction, uh, all this stuff. Learn on the job because learning on the job is probably the best thing you can do. Um, but we're still learning, right? We are still learning. There's so much more to learn. There's new things happening, new laws changing. So we're still learning, you know. And uh, um, I gotten, uh, I'm not a handy guy and I learned to do a few things, you know, that I never thought I would do. And I'm sure I'll learn a few more. It's an adventure. Um, so when I we looked back, was like, um, and I was talking to our travel partner, Life Wellness. And I remember talking to him where it's like, well, there's a lack of information here. I'm getting all these questions. I don't know. I only know what I know. I was still in the middle of it. Uh, even trying to find information for other people was not the easiest in this area of real estate, buying property. And we came, uh, we came up with doing a workshop on location. And that's what we did. We did I think uh, a couple of years ago, we did this. Uh, maybe not even two years ago, a year and a half. And we're very successful. A small group of people came. And they were there for 10 days two weeks and um, they learned the, the lay of the land the the island itself was very educational they got to get together real estate agents uh, bread and bankers uh, lawyers accountants it was, you know uh, tax people it was great and from that again because the interest just keeps growing we did a e version of it I'll put the link for that and I think this uh, the reason why we did all this is, is to help people do their due diligence and I think uh, we're thinking of doing another one on location. We'll keep you guys informed. Um, so you can click on that just to learn more. So before uh, ending the video, I just wanted to read something here that, um, and I'm going to read it because I reflect on things we've done. And uh, anyways, I'm going to share this with you. Hopefully uh, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. Um, so we know firsthand how exciting it is when you want something so bad. You have thought about making a move for years. Um, you are eager to start your next life adventure. It's an amazing feeling. We know that feeling. Like we really do. It's it's you you can lose sleep for sure, and you you know it's a very exciting and it's such a nice energy that you get. And um, and if this feeling is the real thing, okay. So in our case, we started thinking of doing this seven eight years ago, and every time it always it was always the same outcome. You know, uh, all, always positive. So the feeling was real. And if that's the case, then it will it will guide you. It will get you through, you know, all the good and the bad. And I think it has for us. Uh, we're still in the middle of it. We're still, you know, we're considering maybe buying again. We're doing a project. Um, these are all things, but it's it's really having the real. You know, it can't just be something that you know. If you think about it a year from now, that was excited already. You know, maybe it was always eighty percent was exactly what we wanted to do with the house, even the outcome. Uh, where we want it to be pretty much I can't there's not uh, you know it's 100% uh, the feeling you get from it it's right on so um, yeah I know the feeling so if you guys are there and that's why you're probably watching these kinds of videos and if you're already kind of focused in on uh, looking for the uh, spe special area of the planet and uh, you found the Azores um, and don't forget, Portugal is one of the safest countries in the world. I think it's five now, top five. Azores being an island is probably extra safe. You know, So if you're already gravitating towards that, I uh, hope this really was useful to you. Uh, but just go slow. Okay, you'll enjoy it more. I think because sometimes we want to rush out. We want things already there. You know, God, I want to be there. I'm thinking about I got a plan. I got to do all this work and things and analyzing. But I already want the end. But we'll get there soon enough but just you just go slow i guess uh, that's why i wanted to just kind of touch on this because these are thoughts that i had and i just wanted to share with you okay so i will end the, vi the video here officially um i really hope you got some value uh spending this time with me here today um you can also click on the uh, video uh i think on the end screen after the video is over that's the video that kind of referred to, to a couple of times called the um, resource real estate and what's going on there so this ties in very well with this one that's all right put it at, at the end there'll be other links in the description so it might be useful to you um and i also want to mention the workshop again uh the e-version okay that we have any information just send me an email um, um i can then send you all the information that you need it might be of use um, what else 
And if you're around the Oakville, Ontario, Canada area, we're doing a Learn Azores night, September 30th. Uh, for more information, get a hold of us in the email. Uh, go to our website. Everything's at the end of the video. And I think that's it. I mean, I just um, thank you so much. I really enjoyed sharing this, um, you know, this information with you. Uh, it's close to my heart, to not only my heart, but Laura as well. And I uh, hope to see you on, uh, on the Azores. Maybe it's even Pico Island. Okay, so thanks for taking the time. Well, we've been working hard today. We we're just clearing a spot on our land to put a cabin. There's Carlos sawing away. We have actually we've probably taken away about three piles of these already. So these trees are in sensu trees that we're taking down. And uh, we're taking them down because we need the view of the ocean. So this is going to be one of the spots that we're going to place one of the units. And just keep on working.